going to be a jam. I was going to go and through and try to play my top 10 guitarist influences. This person, actually one person asked me this yesterday or the day before and then today someone asked me again and then sent me a, a link to Steve Vai uh, giving his top 10 and his was 45 minutes because he explains and he starts with a nine-year-old kid no so i'll give you my top 10 that i can think of right off you know just thinking and i'll try to explain why very quickly ace freely obviously because it was i love music i like music a lot i, I listened to the theme from shaft over and over and over again that was my first you know music thing where I would just listen to that song, the theme from Shaft, over and over and over, and then I started liking other things, and then Kiss, and holy crap, who are these guys, this isn't like these long-haired hippie dudes, they're totally from not from this planet, totally cool, and I always loved Ace, because Ace is just rock and roll. Does what he like, wants. He's, you know, did drugs, drank, but but he was still the coolest guy in the band without trying. Like Paul and Gene tried to be. Paul had to force himself. He had to force himself to be the front man of Kiss. It, because the guy that wanted to do all the talking was Peter Chris. I got the demos from uh, Peter Orientago, whatever his name, Moose. I was uh, I'm friends with that guy and he gave me all the demos so I've got just about I, I I told him just 10 or 15 shows from the beginning so he's got the very first one in Bell Sound uh, studios and to the first uh, week of the destroyer tour when the, uh, he quit and then started working for Angel and then Alice 
and somebody else. But the guy has been around, and he's like the top in the industry. Anyways, getting back to Ace Freely, he's number one because he inspired me to pick up the guitar. And I wasn't crazy about Les Pauls. I, I kind of am now, I guess, because I'm an old man, but <clears throat> I just thought Les Pauls were boring, ugly. I had five Les Pauls in the 80s. You could pick up a brand new Gibson Les Paul Custom for 300 bucks. 250 300 bucks in the 80s. I had a black one, a sunburst, a tobacco sunburst, cherry sunburst, a white. I think I have four or five. I have a picture of me sitting in front of my Marshall stack with all these Les Pauls going, you know, because I hated them. I loved my star, my uh, Charvel slash Jackson star that I had made in 1980. Anybody wants to say anything? I had it made in 1980 by Charvel, and basically it was, I went down there, I got the body, I had the neck that I wanted, because I'd been working at Clean Music, I liked the 78 Strat neck, I had them put together, boom, 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 and that kind of turned the course, because by then I was, when I started building that guitar, I was 12, I think, in 1980, 12, 13, because Randy Rhodes, I started taking lessons from him. He's on the list. But next, so from Ace Freely, I go to Eddie Van Halen because Van Halen 1 came out, and holy crap. I couldn't under, like, what is that? How is he, whatever he's doing, I want to do. And I wasn't crazy about, you know, the. <laughs> because I don't do it very well. That's not the thing I liked about him. It was the beer, all the noises he made. Love that. And you can tell because I make a lot of friggin' noises when I have the bar to do it. This thing just crapped out on me, otherwise I'd be playing that. So, one, Ace Freely. Because it's obvious. I'm a kid. Two, Eddie Van Halen. Oh my gosh. And then three, Randy Rhodes. And you're probably thinking, really? But Randy Rhodes lived, like, say I'm sitting in my parents' house. He lived several blocks over. And then a few more blocks past him was my friend Brent Beveridge. Let's say his name. I won't say anything else. But Brent Beveridge, me and him were good friends in junior high school. And I was taking guitar lessons in, from some guy, some jazz guy. And I wanted to learn, like, what Eddie was doing. I wanted to learn Judas Priest songs. I wanted to learn, uh, because I just got the Live Priest album. I wanted to learn Genocide. The teacher that I had was a jazz guitarist. He could not teach me the beginning to Genocide. So I was pissed. So I went over to Brent. And he knew a lot of Judas Priest stuff. I go, does your guitar teacher teach you this stuff? Yeah, man, yeah. I'm like, well, pff, I'm switching. Who is this guy? Randy Rhodes. So we rode our bikes over there. I, I wrote, remember, I rode my uh, black 10-speed, I think. Went over there and knocked on the door. He comes to the door. I go, uh, you know, oh, hi, Brent. He uses my friend Mike. Hello. I go, I'd like to take lessons, guitar lessons from you. Would you teach me this, this, this? And he's like, oh, yeah. I didn't mention Van Halen. And uh, <clears throat> so I took lessons from him until he joined Ozzy. And then when he came back, just before the diary tour, he did the Twilight Riot stuff, and, and I took a few more lessons then. So, but he turned in, out to be a big influence later on. At the time, I had no idea what he was going to be. I just knew he was very cool, very nice. He looked like a rock star. He wailed when he, I mean, because I listened to the Quiet Riot albums that he gave me. Well, I got the first one. I had to buy, this, get the second one off Drew Forsyth, the drummer. Cause, but anyways, I didn't get it until it was almost too late you know i got it when he came back and i had him teach me suicide solution that's why i play a lot and uh so big influence number three 
for Mick Mars. Because 81, I go down and I'm at the second show, I think, Motley played. And I was right there every single show, me and my friend. And he taught me Too Fast for Love. Me on. Now, if you know on the back of the first album, he's holding that weird guitar. It's a piece of crap. It was a prop guitar. But this guy built them for Motley Crue for the photo shoot. Mick didn't even keep it. I don't think. As far as I know, he gave it back. He said, I hate the way it plays. It looks cool, but it plays like crap. But he taught me, you know. playing that his first marshals in the oh. so Mick Mars is four and fifth is my guitar teacher after Randy left I didn't take I took one lesson from George Lynch and I was out of there so came back to so Craig Turner or Craig Collins Turner number five because geez he had a huge influence on me and the only the main thing I remember him he never taught it to me he just did it on stage, it was one of his things. He didn't have a bar either. He had a star made, like me, but his was a lot nicer. And he had a Kaler on there, like mine, but he just didn't want to play it. Didn't like it. Uh, so he'd use his uh, sunburst. Uh, I think it was Tobacco Sunburst Last Paul. And he'd do that. That was Craig's thing. And a few others. A lot of harmonic stuff that I picked up. So he's five. Six, Tony Iommi. My uh, uncle, when I was really getting into Kiss, he, so, I just remember this. So, he played me Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. I'm like, oh! And then I started listening to Black Sabbath and I'm like, wow. This this is the crap. So, you know. Big influence, Tony Iommi. Then I have Dime Bag. Dime is in there, Dime Bag Daryl. Uh, because I did pick up a lot of stuff from him in the 90s. And also from Jay. Jay from White Zombie. Because they kept metal going through the 90s. That's all I listened to. And a little bit of Marilyn Manson, but... You know, that one, you know, Rob Zombie, great. So, I don't even know who he had up until John 5. And, and John 5, he's not an influence, but I certainly like the way he plays big time. And also, Steve Vai. Steve Vai is an influence. I didn't put him on this list, though. I couldn't, because stuff started popping up. I'm like, oh, yeah, Tony Iommi was number six after Craig. Then I have seven is Dime, but yeah, okay, Dime. And eight, Paco de Lucia. He's He was a flamenco player, and he played with Al Mio and all them people. They did a few records, and he played with his fingers, but the stuff he played was amazing. Amazingly fast and accurate and just beautiful. He just passed away. Look him up, Paco de Lucia great guitar player and he was a big influence on my speed how i wanted to play fast you know the high you know but you know <laughs> If you 
never noticed that I play fast. Then we go to uh, Judas Priest, KK and uh, and uh, Glenn as a team. To me, Judas Priest is you know the guitars are they're one. Both of them influenced me big time on my rhythm, and it turned out my when I wrote, I could hear some Priest in there. Then. See, that's, uh, yeah, and Jimmy Page, just because once I got out of high school and realized that he was amazing and he wasn't just for stoners and losers, <laughs> because I had long hair in high school, but I wasn't a stoner, it was clear. I had my hair sticking up and bleached way before anybody else. I'd go to school full on makeup, you know, foundation, eyeliner, everything. And I wouldn't do any PE. I wouldn't participate in uh, physical anything because I didn't want to sweat. All I had to do was like the four minute mile or whatever. I had to do that, prove that I was in good shape. So I did that and I would bat because I was good at hitting a baseball. And then I'd have someone run the bases for me. And they passed me, hey. It's a Burbank school system. Not surprising. But, uh,. I really got into Jimmy Page and then realized, crap, that guy's great. And then how great uh, John Bonham was. And, and then, uh, you know, Steve Vai is definitely in there. And I've met him. He's a big one. And then anybody that uses the bar a lot and, and stereo, plays in stereo and all that, you know. Uh, Steve Vai. But that's, we're going on now. That's 11. And then there's guys, the guy from March Enemy. I, I like the way he uh, writes and plays. And the dun -dun 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 -dun. then Wayne Static. I thought his rhythms are great. So that was an influence. Whatever, Wayne Static. It's not what you think it is. And then uh, that's about it. That's over ten. But actually, there's a lot more than that. There's Steve Stevens. I didn't make this up. And in fact, I when I found these online, because I was watching an interview that Steve had to keep the same laser gun because he couldn't find one that had a speaker pointing this way. So he could do this. <laughs> That's from Steve Stevens. Listen, remember Rebel Yell? He uses it at the beginning of the solo and he uses it at the end. But his is modified. He puts a pot, you know, potentiometer in there so he can adjust the way it, you know. Wee, wee, wee. He's an influence. And he actually signed my white uh, and po white and black polka dot uh, roads that, what's his name, Randy Chambers has played and, uh, so Steve Stevens signed that, and he wanted to buy it. Steve Vai wanted to buy it. He signed it, and because uh, I had it at Performance Guitar, and that's when I had it in there being worked on in the 80s when Steve Vai was coming up with the gem. So he wanted. I didn't sell it, obviously. I still have it. So I have, but I have autographed by him. And then Kelly Rhodes, I let him autograph that when he was being nice to me. He's not now for some reason. I don't know. But that's it. That's over 10, and that's my uh, the top 10, I would say, influences for me probably taken way too long and I feel like I should play but why because I've, I've just talked for like a long time so that's it that's my top 10 guitar players influences it's not necessarily my top 10 favorite guitar but they are also of course my favorites but I can't sit and listen to my guitar teacher anymore but he's a huge influence still
A lot of people. I could even put my friend Brent as an influence. Because I was going to play bass. And he goes, don't play bass. Play guitar. And I'm like, really? And we'd hang out and talk. And he, this is when he used to be very nice. Now, he goes by... Well, he's Brent Woods. And uh, he's had some lucky breaks. Enough to keep him going in the business. And hey, more power to him. You know... I like I I still like the guy. I think he's a nice guy. We haven't talked in a while. I think the last time I saw him was when I had great seats when Kiss had just gotten back together in '96, and I was sitting right next to Gene Simmons on his birthday at the Forum, and I could see Brent and his little buddy Bill. And Bill, I I home I uh I'm Bill's nephew's Sunday school teacher, this guy, I don't want to say his last name, it's Marty, but Brent and Bill were sitting out there, and I, you know, flipping off, laughing, uh -huh, because I'm right there, I mean, we're sitting right next to Gene Simmons, so, it was, but Brent was a, you know, he said, keep playing, and then I actually stopped playing guitar after I saw Steve Vai for a year, and I was in a band called St. Eve, they sucked, but the bass was good. And uh, I became a pretty good bass player, and we were re rehearsing, and Brent was in the same rehearsal place. And he's like, dude, you're a good bass player, but why did you stop playing guitar? And I'm like, because I saw Steve Vai. He goes, well, why? You know, that's not a good reason. And I'm like, you're right, it's not. And I went back. But I go back and forth. I love guitar. And I, you know, play bass videos all day, but who's going to listen to that? Some people, but not many. On my album, though, I'm having a bass solo in the middle of a song instead of the guitar solo. I've already got it worked out. It's going to be great. So there you go. That's my top ten guitar influences and why, I guess. Right? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.